owners of the underrepresented southwestern region and to provide them with more representation. And as a result of that, when this project came up, I have been, I have been, and so other people have been also walking around the neighborhoods that are adjacent to this uh, project and talking to people. And I know people perhaps have not given noise complaints, but they have certainly told me that they have noise complaints and that they do fear the existing plant. That I have told, I've suggested that they call the number that we had on the flyer about it, but the problem is they don't have a place to complain, is what I think has happened over the years. Also, uh, we have circulated a petition that is very simple. The proposed new Peaker power plant must be located somewhere further away from residents and schools. It's not that we're that anybody's opposed to perhaps having a uh, peaker plant somewhere in San Diego to help with the energy production, it's that this location is totally unacceptable. And I will say that of these 260 uh, different people who put their names to this petition, we have talked to everybody, all 55 of those people who live closest to the plant, all 55 of those families that live closest to the existing plant over there of a Del Monte, and every single one of them is totally opposed to this. Some of them are having nightmares about this, in fact. And they, I'm going to give this to you. I just made one copy of the petition at this point, and I will tell you that we are continuing to collect signatures, and we will get more. And these are the people who live closest and also work closest to this project. Now, um, I would like to start by referencing a statement that the city of Chula Vista made in regards to the Larkspur plant that it probably cast doubt on the need for another peaker at all in this area. But it is needed, but if it is needed to get rid of the South Bay plant, then it needs to be located in a place further away from residents and schools. This seems like a, a real simple concept and almost a non no brainer, correct? <laughs> uh, Chula Vista's demand is about 65 megawatts instead of that time, while the combined existing and proposed plants generate approximately 1,400 megawatts. So if we actually need a, a beaker, which is questionable, it needs to go somewhere else. The landfill seems like a good choice. Also, I, there's somebody in the audience here who owns 10 acres out in Otay Mesa, where it would be three miles away from any residential. And uh, that would be a good choice as well. It is uh, second of all, it's totally unacceptable the applicants trying to use this mitigation for air quality problems, the potential for the current plant to emit. The current plant is so inefficient and expensive to operate, no one could afford to run it for this many hours. The um, estimated emissions of the new plant are excessive. They're excessive because there are so many sensitive receptors within 400 feet of it. Their health cannot and must not be ignored by allowing the applicant to buy pollution credits or offset, offset pollution in any way. It's not clear to us what is being referenced, referred to as offset mitigation, but it's absolutely clear that under no circumstances should this or any other plant, including existing one, be allowed to emit any non-attainment pollutants and the precursors this close to sensitive receptors. This is a picture here of, um, can you put it on the slide show and then it'll be a little bigger so people can see it, <laughs> that I made from Google Earth. Uh, with a line that measures one mile from the peaker's new location on the site. I drew the circle a mile around the site. As you can see, there are numerous homes within the circle, three public elementary schools, one high school, two Head Starts, and a pre-K. There are also two recreation centers, a health clinic, several private schools, and daycares within that circle. Several of the other peakers' reports had maps with one-mile circles. I am sure the staff has the resources to do a better job than I did, and a more accurate job than I did, but I believe staff's final report absolutely needs to have some kind of a map like this that is accurate, showing just what is in one mile from this uh, proposed peaker plan, or the existing peaker plan. And we are appalled when we look at the data 
that's online for recently approved plants in Southern California. That is this document here that you have. And I have a few more copies of it that people in the audience, if they'd like them. And as you see, I have here the number of megawatts, the acres, the closest to school, the closest school, the closest residents, and what's around these plants. And this is from 2001. And of course, everything is not online. Anything prior to 2001 is not online, so I did not have access to it. But if you look at that, and I think staff does have access to this information, and I ask that they include this in their report. Uh, looking at the plants since 2001 that are online, it is obvious this plant should never have been approved in 2001. This location is totally inappropriate for this kind of use. This is a total anomaly in the state. The closest residence to any of these other peakers is 1,000 feet, and that is in the city of industry in LA, where obviously they are very constrained. And that is, there are over 50 homes closer to this peaker plant than, there are over 50 homes closer than 1,000 feet to this peaker plant. And if you go to the next slide, it shows a 1,000, well, you can see the 1,000 foot circle in the middle there, and the next slide has it enlarged, the bigger circle. It's 1,500 feet, and the inner circle is 1,000 feet. Actually, My name is Teresa Rosero, and I'm the president of the Southwest Children's Specific Association, and we organized to be a structured association for the residents, property owners, and